It's basically what we got the cross from. Where the cross was used as a a device for torture and killing people. It was for the changing of season from uh, the spring. It was a god, a goddess uh, who had um, wound up marrying her son. It's where you, when you read in Jeremiah 44, 19, it talks about the queen of heaven. I'm going to read a little bit, and then we're going to go into our, today, our sermon. It says, today, very, today is a very important day. But many people from, from the pew to the pulpit will miss out on the true significance behind today, the true meaning of today. More than what, what you, it's more than what we were taught and more than what you think it means. But, it's sad, but the sad part about it today, many will continue to embrace the lie and continue to denounce, reject Jesus Christ, the Messiah, Yahshua, Hamashiach. By disrespecting and renouncing Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. You ask me how? Let me explain. Today, many people believe and all, today many people believe, many people, believers and non-believers, believe in a pagan holiday. But Easter is considered a pagan ceremony, a, world, a worldwide, unknown, unknownly, a worldwide, unknowingly, with their clothes. See, because when you look at today, what is it? People going by. People going to buy suits, get their hair done. When it's all said and done, they're going to spend like three, five, three or four hundred dollars for something they might not even wear after today. But people take today as a fashion show, a day of bunnies, uh, a rabbit laying eggs, and rabbits can't lay eggs. And people fail to realize the meaning of the word Easter. I'm going to give you a meaning of, of a couple of meaning, a couple of things, so when we go into this, so when I begin to speak, a lot of you won't be lost, okay? Now, it says, Easter is a pagan holiday, or it's witchcraft. It's a, uh, it comes from the word Esther, A-S-H-T-A-R, is where we get the word Easter, which was the day of resurrection of the god Timaz. Who was, brought, who was brought back to life or resurrected by his mother, his wife. His mother was his wife. In Jeremiah 44, 19, it speaks about the queen of heaven. Or it spoke a little about it when it says, the goddess or the queen of heaven. That was, be, that was the beginning of the celebration of Bala worship. Or where the Catholics came in and started adding certain things to what we call the Christian beliefs. And from there, that's where you get the cross from, the uh, capital T and the lower T. You notice that there are different types of cross. We looked at the cross. The cross weighed 300 pounds. Can you imagine, after what we saw on here, the different things Jesus went through and did had to endure the cross for a certain long journey. Now imagine the guy that had to help him with the cross. A 300 cross, can you imagine carrying 300 pounds? Then to turn around, you got to carry someone else because they can't do the rest of the journey. Mm. And then he was crucified with no clothes on at all. You see, when we look at today, so many lies are being screwed around the pulpit to the point that people will continually recycle the lie, to the point that people constantly believe. They say that Jesus went to hell, took the keys to death and hell, and, and then he had victory over the grave. And Jesus did all that on the cross. He didn't go to hell. He did all that on the cross. See, because when he died, as we... Go over to, let's go over to uh, Matthew 27, 34. The water represented the life and the spirit, the life or purity or the life of the spirit. So out of Jesus came the life of the spirit in his life, in the life. The cross is an intersection, a road. Intersection, or in other words, inner sea. Speaks of how Jesus is our intercessor. You see, when we come and when we go into interceding, we're going on the behalf of others to pray to the Father in the request for the aid or help or whatever it is in, the, in regards to that person's life. It's nothing spooky or nothing high-tech. It's just going in there in the name of Jesus. I come before you. 
I pray for my brother. I pray for my sister. And we're interceding. We're addressing the issue and asking God to step in, to release his spirit to come in and change situations. You know, it's said that so many people got religion and fictions blended up so much to the point it's like, what is the truth? You see, when Jesus died on the cross, he died on the cross for our sins. The word stated in Revelation 8, uh, not 8, in Revelation 12 and 8, that from the foundations of the earth, Christ died for us. So before sin even entered into the land, God knew it was going to happen, so he allowed the, the Jesus to die for us. But so many people take God for granted. They think they got time. They think they can do these things. They think they can, they, they can play with God and, 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 and get away with these things. But yet, we are making the decision that we don't want to go to heaven. We want to go to hell because we play with God and we think that we got all day when tomorrow isn't promised to no man. We justify, rationalize, and, and believe that God will make certain ways and make ways out of no ways when, when reality is, if I'm in sin, there's no way to make something in, um, in my sin. Because when I'm in sin, I'm ignoring God. I'm saying no to God every time God speaks when I'm in sin. When God, when the time comes, he said, that, he, said, he said, Lord, Lord, I did this in your name. I did that in your name. He said, I didn't know you. Why did he say that? Because he said, I'm not the God of the adulterous. I'm not a God of the who, who unforgives, of, of, of unforgiver. I'm not a God of this. I'm not a God of that. So I don't know who you are. You're talking to the wrong person. You should be talking to the devil. Mm. Go, depart. Where they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You see, we, 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 we've been brainwashed so long to the point that we don't know the truth anymore because we allow <coughs> fiction to be our reality. We got caught up in the mixture of things to the point we found ourselves justifying it and saying that it's okay, God knows my heart. But the question is, if God knows your heart, which God are you talking about? We look how Jesus came and he was bruised, he was crucified, he was pretty much crushed. I mean, he could have died at any point because the things that he went through should have caused his lungs to clap up, collapse a long time ago. It should have caused him to, to die of shock, officiation a long time ago. It should have been a time when he should have died when they were whipping him. Yeah. But he didn't. Because his, mind, his, mission, his, his mission was on the cross, on Calvary. His mission was to save our soul. But yet people kept mocking him and people wanted to beat him. And you, you, people went through all these things. We, 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 we look at this and this is about the accurate, the closest to the accurate, accuracy that you can get almost to anyone making anything in Hollywood pertaining to the um, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Mm -hmm. But we fail to realize that we have gotten so caught up and been so misinformed and misunderstood and we've been placed in a form of spiritual bondage so long to the point that we forgot who God is. Mm. You see, G Jesus' death knocked the grave off balance. Mm. His death knocked death off balance. He didn't have to go to hell. He didn't have to go to hell to get keys and all this stuff that people say. Everything that took place on the cross, he said to the, he said to the Father, he said, what is it? into your hands I come. Mm -hmm. Did he not say that? Yeah. Did he not tell the guy next to him, he said, and he said you shall be with me in paradise. Mm -hmm. Where did in between him telling God, into your hands I come, has him in hell? But we never sit back and analyze these little cliches and these little people's sayings and these little lies that come from the pulpit to the point that witchcraft has been spurred around. We have became intertwined into witchcraft to the point that we don't know the reality from fiction. So when reality comes, we think it's confusing and perplexing. When reality is not confusing and perplexing. What it is is we've been deceived. So he said, enter in your hands, I come. So that means that once he was, he was in the grave, after he left the grave, he had to go to the Father. And after he went to the Father, then he came to do his mission, where he was seen by the many people 12 times before he actually went back to the Father. Where, at any part of that interpretation, did it say that he went to hell? If he went to hell, don't, wouldn't it be some form of where the enemy would have tried to find a way to keep him in there? If he went to hell, hell wouldn't really exist anymore. 
Why would it exist anymore if Jesus went to hell? If he went into hell, had a battle in hell, that kind of speaks in regards to a lot of things that's supposed to happen into the end time. It kind of kind of bumps head with a lot of, of the theology of what the Bible teaches in Revelation and the book of Daniels and so forth. See, what happened is it got mixed up in the interpretation between man's reality and fiction. So they got religion and fiction mixed up because religion is nothing more than man's way of trying to make a situation right or justifying things to be a true thing. That's why Paul always stated to study. In my studying, I will gain the revelation of things that are true and things that are false because I'm constantly in the tune with it. In my studying, I learn how to pray. In my studying, I know how to commune with the Father. Mm -hmm. Now let's go over to, uh, back to, uh, what is it, 27? Mm -hmm. Let me make sure, yeah, 27, 52. So it's saying that the law is the thing that points out sin and the law is the thing that gives sin that lets you, uh, helps us know that it's sin. And it's the thing that gives sin the strength. So we can't say it's a sin because now we know it's a sin. Mm -hmm. You understand? Know because we're, it's, it's part of the law. Mm -hmm. You see, no speeding. If, you, uh, if you're on 50, if you're doing a, the speed limit is 55, you're only allowed to go so much. Anything over, you can risk a chance of getting arrested, right? Mm -hmm. But Jesus came and done away with it. When Jesus came, he took control over death and life. Mm -hmm. He did it all on the cross. Mm-hmm. For you and I. Mm -hmm. You see, it's a lot of stuff in life that we are not aware of, that we find ourselves blind to, that we find ourselves constantly allowing ourselves to be deceived in. And the thing is, the reason that the enemy is seen as there's some form of victory going on is because we haven't sat back and studied. Mm -hmm. We haven't sat back and did the research on, on these different things. We just assume that we have heard it so long Grandma's taught it, grandpa taught it, everybody kept saying it to the point that it's true. You go to any church around this time, and they're going to say, well, he went to the grave, and he went to, he, uh, he was crucified, he laid on the cross, he did this, he did that, he went to hell, and he took this thing, he took this, and took that, but yet they got so excited in the whole process that they forgot to do their research and find out that a lot of stuff that they're preaching is false. So if I preach false things and I poison you, then that means that I'm guilty for you going to hell because then you're taking these things to be truths and you're living these to be truths and then you get before God and say, well, God, I did what everything I was taught, but yet you were taught lies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a good example, a little health uh, thing blended into today's sermon, okay? How many of you uh, use sweeteners or splinter or all those different types of things? Well, inside of Splendor, there's chemicals that's called formaldehyde, and there's uh, stuff in there that they use for psych patients, and there's stuff that, there's, that, uh, that was actually originally, that gives it the sweetener, is the stuff that actually was used as an insecticide. So, in the end, it causes uh, a reactions on your, on your body, it causes reactions on your brain, which causes like uh, Alzheimer's, dementia, and all those different things. Mm -hmm. Uh, forgetfulness and all that. So we, we don't do the research on this and they say zero calories, this and that, but we fail to look at that these things are the things that are shutting our bodies down that's causing things to occur in our bodies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What am I saying? What am I saying? Well, many people go to church, they listen to these preachers, they listen to these people, but no one goes home, not, not too many people go home and study to find out if what you taught me was true. Amen. For a long time, we sit there and I heard people say, and it took me to last year, it took me into actually getting into the, and, and getting, going into pastorship to realize that it's not, a, that celebrating Easter was a disrespect and a slap in God's face. Mm. Mm. That if any Christian or believer celebrates any form of pagan holiday, they disrespecting God. But yet, mm. 
we asked ourselves, what did, we, what did it come in? It came in when, when, when Constantine came in and they formed the Catholic religion, which was formed off of Baal, B-A-A-L, or Babylonian religion. And what happened was they brought in all these different things, and they allowed the pagans to bring in their, their objects and their cursed objects. And when they brought in their cursed objects, that's where we had got all these crosses and crucifixions and stuff. And when you look up the word crucifixion, you begin to see that there are, each crucifixion has a certain meaning behind it. That's why it says, curse is any man hang up on the tree, because Jesus hung on a cursed object. Mm -hmm. But yet people wear cursed objects every day. Talk about something they wear because it signifies Jesus. But it doesn't signify Jesus. It has nothing to do with Jesus. All it was was a cursed object used as a key to bring forth our salvation. Mm -hmm. So it had nothing to do with the cross. As we said Friday, it had a lot to do with the blood that was shed for our mm -hmm. sins. You see, people fail to realize that if you look at the Old Testament, it's only types of shadow, meaning that it's only a, 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 it gives you a clarity of what is really happening. And then we go into the New Testament, the New Testament starts showing you, then it shows you about the blood. In the New Testament, in the Old Testament, it never said anything about crosses, but yet it did in a certain sense where it said, cursing any man hanging upon the tree, but they never talked about the people who were crucified in the Old Testament. We hear about how Peter, people say Peter was hung upside down. People read that context, people read that scripture out of context where he said, I'm not worthy to die like Jesus. I'm just paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. But somehow, some way they said that Jesus, that Peter was hung upside down in, in, because he said that. Mm -hmm. And so he was supposed to be buried somewhere in the Vatican uh, next to one of the first popes. Wow. In reality, after they did, not many people have did researches, they found out that was Peter's bones. Mm -hmm. That was somebody else's bones. Mm -hmm. You notice that if you begin to do your research, every person that did their research to try to kind of debunk uh, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection wound up becoming Christians or kind of being believers. Mm -hmm. You see, we're believers. We're the Christian meaning Christ-like, and that's what they was using to signify the, the, uh, the what the, what's that word, being sarcastic. Mm -hmm. But we're considered believers because people fail to realize that we don't we, 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 we come from the level of believing God to knowing God because the more we get into our relationship with the Father, we know that He will. You see, people always say, Well, I'm believing God for if God's willing to, and I don't know where that saying came from if God's willing or if God's willing and the creek don't rise. Where did that come from? <laughs> You hear that a lot in a lot of Baptist churches. I don't know where it came from. Then I heard another guy say it on TV. And I don't know if it came, if it was something from down south, but the thing is we get so caught up into the cliche things to the point that we find ourselves brainwashing ourselves to the point that many people were looking at the passion of Christ but missed out that the devil was walking all through the movie. He sure was. He was whispering in people's ears. He was whispering and told Judah to kill himself. Yeah. He was going around and he got mad because he didn't real, a lot of people didn't realize why the devil got mad when Jesus was getting crucified. They thought he would be happy. But they fell to realize the devil didn't know, and a lot of people didn't know, the moment Jesus got crucified, that's when victory took place. Amen. Amen. You see, people fell to realize to do the research to find out that on the cross, victory took place. It wasn't the victory of him coming down off the cross. It wasn't the victory... It was the victory that he had not. He didn't die. He didn't. He just said that. He said he will not die. He will give his life up, not commit suicide. He said he will give his life up, meaning that at the certain time when he feels his time, when God said, "Okay, this is it," then he said, "Okay, I'm ready to let it go." Mm -hmm. See, because if he didn't let his life go, then they would have murdered him. And then it will really defeat the purpose. How can he say, well, deep, it'll be Jesus' death, burial, it'll be Jesus' murder. It's hard to even say death, burial, resurrection, I say that. It'll be Jesus' murder, resurrection, Jesus', Jesus murder, burial. burial, and resurrection. Thank you, because it's hard to say that without saying death. <laughs> yeah. See, because it wouldn't have been his death, it would have been his murder. So, and it, it wouldn't sound right that he said he would be murdered. No, it said he would die for our sins. See, Sometimes we need to read the word slowly, Amen. real slowly, mm -hmm. even to the point where it's like we're reading word by word because there are certain things that's missing. It's like when we watch the movie, a lot of people miss a lot of different things that were going on. Some people saw it for the entertainment. Some people saw it because they didn't know, because okay, I, they, the read, they, you know, they didn't really understand the read. But some people even took the stuff that was added in here that's not even in the Bible. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Amen. But yet... 
It was the illustration, but yet people never realized, and I like the way that Mel Gibson placed the devil in there in the form of a human. See, because people fail to realize that if, 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 if the Bible says that we have to be careful of who we entertain, it could be, it could be angels. Do you remember that one? Yeah. I'm paraphrasing. Right. Meaning that these demonic spirits come into a, they can come into a certain realm where they take on a human form. I was listening, I was listening and watching this little clip, and they said that in hell, this guy went to hell, and they said that uh, there were different types of uh, demons. They were wanting to call, pull people's eyes out, and they do certain, certain things to tear people's head off and have them trying to search for their heads or searching for their eyes or searching for these things, or they bite their head off. Then they said it was a human, it was one in there that looked like half human, he was like, it looked like a human, but he had a half a face. It's like all this was half off. You know how you try to see someone who's deformed? He said he saw people like that. So people fail to realize that when we allow ourselves to be deceived, we allow ourselves to go to hell. Mm. We almost surrender and submit to the devil and just go in. Mm. We have loved ones that should be here, but whatever excuse they choose to make, all we can do is intercede for them. But we have so many people who misunderstand the word intercede or intercession. Mm -hmm. You see, because although Jesus died on the cross for our sins, he's still interceding for us. Yeah, Even day. for the ones who don't understand yeah. that I need to come to Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So we must understand. We must understand Thank you, Jesus. that Jesus did not just die for our sins. He gave his life for our sins. So the question is, are we going to take our walk with God seriously? Or are we going to constantly play with him? When we see someone that's not in church, we should say, look, I want you to come and check us out. We don't collect offerings. We don't we don't, we on our, on our Wednesday night clubs, we don't accept offerings. We, our, our, our Sunday service, our Wednesday, our everyday services come as you are. So, but a lot of people don't invite people to the church because of their lifestyle. Okay. But forget about your lifestyle and just get into the presence of God and constantly repent every single day and every chance you get because I'm constantly repenting every single day. I was talking to Apostle Saturday, I mean Friday. And when I was talking to him, I told him, I said, you know, I'm learning so much as a pastor that I'm constantly repenting because of the stuff I was taught. I didn't realize how much false doctrines I consumed and was taught at all the different churches I went to until I started getting into my studies. No, I didn't get into the YouTubes or all that. I mean, into my studies. Certain things that puzzle me, I begin to go deeper into research. Then sometimes it comes to trouble when we do word research and word plays and stuff like that. And we begin to understand because I was looking today, I was sitting there and I was playing, I was, you know, playing in the mirror, uh, trying to get my words together. So I was like talking about describing the word cross in the mirror. You know, sometimes it's like when you're little, they say, you know, you're rehearsing. Sometimes you look in the mirror when you're doing your rehearsing. So I'm in the mirror, so I'm talking about it. So I said, I said, well, the cross. Inter meaning intersect, intersect, meaning intercede, intercede. Now it means that I must go into the presence of God on the behalf of someone who don't know that. I'm not asking God to, to, to do certain things. I'm just asking God on, on the behalf of them to open up the eyes of the blind. Amen. Open the eyes of the lame because, see, although they look healthy on the outside, there's something that's holding them back. As Brother John said, as Evangelist John said, there's a demonic wall that's holding people back from right. coming into the church. Right. There are things that's holding people back from coming into the, and receiving these teachings. But yet people will flock to a church to hear lies. They, sure will. they will flock to churches to hear deception. They will flock to a church and constantly be deceived. And in the end, when they get to the presence of God, they say, well, God, I did all this in your name. And God said, you didn't do it in my name. Yet we find ourselves looking at today and not knowing that today is a day of salvation. Amen. Today, if, if a preacher don't preach anything else, he should be preaching salvation today. Amen. He should be preaching salvation every single day. That's right. He should be preaching about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ every single day. Yeah. We're called to preach Jesus, not preach ourselves, not preach about prosperity, not preach about anything but Jesus Christ That's right. and Jesus crucified. 
See, because me having a bunch of money doesn't mean anything if I'm in hell. That's right. right. Me having a lot of money and having everything my heart could desire doesn't mean anything when my soul and my name isn't written in the, in the kingdom of heaven. That's right. It's almost like going, it's like having a lot of money but living in a, in a, in a place where, every, where you're just miserable. your study, when you go into your time with God, just ask Him to constantly change you. Constantly, just keep every time before you lay your head on the pillow, repent. Yes, Lord. Before you get, I mean, whenever it comes to your mind, you realize that it's not right because the devil will make you believe it's right. He'll cause you to justify that sin, that hate, that anger, that cuss, that yeah. gossiping, that murmuring, that complaining, all these different things that come around in your life, he'll cause you, but yet God will just keep telling you and keep saying, pray for those who spitefully misuse you. Pray for those who, who do you wrong. Pray for those. What did he say? He said, intercede for your enemy. Because most of our biggest enemies are us. In the moment that we can pray for our enemies, the moment God began to move, Jesus said that it's easy to pray for those that you love, but the hardest part is to pray for those that you hate. He said, how can you say you love me when you can't see how can you say you love God who you can't see and curse your brother who you can who you can see? Mm -hmm. He said someone's lying here. Amen. Amen.